In this video, I want to talk about the ratio test for series. Ratio test is one of the powerful tests that we can use to determine the convergence or divergence of series. Consider the infinite series sigma n from 1 to the infinity of a sub n. And we suppose the a sub n to be not equal to 0. Now, let's suppose r is limit n approaches infinity of absolute of a sub n plus 1 over a sub n. So r equals to this limit. If the value of r is less than 1, then the series is convergent. If the value of r is greater than 1, the series is divergent. But when r equals 1, this test is inconclusive. Which means that we cannot conclude anything about the convergence or divergence of this series. This series may be converges or may be diverges. So to determine the convergence or divergence of the series with the ratio test, first we have to find the limit of a sub n plus 1 over a sub n. If this limit is less than 1, the series is convergent. If this limit is greater than 1, the series is divergent. But when this limit equals 1, we cannot conclude anything about the series. We have to use other tests to determine the convergence or divergence of the series in this case. Consider this series, sigma n from 1 to the infinity n over 2 to the n. We want to use the ratio test to find out this series is convergence or divergence. Let's suppose a sub n to be n over 2 to the power of n. Then a sub n plus 1 is n plus 1 over 2 to the power of n plus 1. For finding a sub n plus 1, we have to replace in a sub n every n with n plus 1. Now let's find the limit as n approaches infinity of absolute of a sub n plus 1 over a sub n. a sub n plus 1 is n plus 1 over 2 to the power of n plus 1. And a sub n is n over 2 to the n. We can simplify the expression in the absolute as n plus 1 over 2 to the power of n plus 1 times by the reciprocal of the expression in denominator. This is how we divide two fractions. We multiply by the reciprocal of denominator. Reciprocal of n over 2 to the n is 2 to the n over n. And note that we don't need to put absolute around this expression because this expression is positive. And when expression is positive, there is no need to put absolute around the expression. Note that 2 to the power of n plus 1 is actually 2 to the power of n times 2. And so, 
if instead of this 2 to the power of n plus 1 in denominator, if I replace it with 2 to the n times 2, this 2 to the n cancels with this 2 to the n in numerator. So in the numerator, only n plus 1 remains, and in denominator, we have 2 times n or 2n and n approaches infinity. This limit equals to limit n over 2n as n approaches infinity. Note that when n approaches infinity, in numerator and denominator of fractions, we can keep the dominant terms and we can ignore the other terms. Between 1 and n, because n approaches infinity, 1 is negligible compared to n. 1 is a constant, is a number, but n goes to infinity. So 1 compared to n is nothing and we can ignore it. And n over 2n is 1 over 2. This is one way that we can find this limit. In a moment, I will show you another way that you can find this limit. But this method that I showed you here is easier because this limit is one half and one half is less than one. It means that the given series here, the series sigma n from one to the infinity n over two to the n is convergent. So again, because this limit is one half and one half is less than one, it means that the given series in the question is convergent. Before we do another example, let me show you another way that you can find this limit here. For finding limit of n plus 1 over 2n, you can divide numerator and denominator by highest degree of denominator. This is the typical method that we use for finding limits at infinity. We divide numerator and denominator by highest degree of denominator. The highest degree of denominator is n to the 1. So we have to divide top and bottom by n to the 1 or n. If we divide every term in numerator by n, we have n over n plus 1 over n. And in denominator, we have 2n over n. n over n is 1. 2n over n is 1. And 1 over n, because n approaches infinity, 1 over infinity goes to 0. So in numerator, we have 1 plus 0 over 2, which is 1 over 2. This is how we can find the limit in another method. As you can see, the answers are the same. And again, because the limit is less than 1, the given series is convergent. Let's do another example. This series is given sigma n from 0 to the infinity, 3 to the power of n plus 1 over n factorial. We want to use the ratio test to find out this series is convergence or divergence. So we have to find this limit. Limit n approaches infinity of absolute of a sub n plus 1 over a sub n. Let's suppose a sub n to be 3 to the n plus 1 over n factorial. And then a sub n plus 1 is 3 to the power of n plus 2 over n plus 1 factorial. Note that for finding a sub n plus 1, you have to replace every n in a sub n with n plus 1. 
So we have to replace this n with n plus 1. And also we have to replace this n with n plus 1. n plus 1 in here plus this one is n plus 2. And denominator will become n plus 1 factorial. So the limit is limit n approaches infinity a sub n plus 1 in numerator so we have to put 3 to the n plus 2 over n plus 1 factorial and 3 to the power of n plus 1 over n factorial in denominator this limit can be written in the form of 3 to the n plus 2 over n plus 1 factorial times by reciprocal of denominator which is n factorial over 3 to the n plus 1. Now note that we can cancel 3 to the n plus 2 with 3 to the n plus 1 from denominator and 1 3 remains in numerator. Note that the power of 3 in numerator is 1 more than the power of 3 in denominator. In numerator, the power of 3 is n plus 2. In denominator, the power is n plus 1. So the difference of the powers is 1. So only 3 to the power of 1 remains in numerator. Let me show it in another way to you. 3 to the n plus 2 over 3 to the n plus 1. When we divide two expression like this, we have to subtract the powers. n plus 2 minus n plus 1. If we subtract the powers, n and n cancels, and 2 minus 1 is 3 to the 1. Also note that n plus 1 factorial in denominator is n plus 1 times n factorial. Based on the definition of factorial, we can write n plus 1 factorial as n plus 1 times n factorial. And now this n factorial in denominator cancels with n factorial in numerator. So what remains from this expression in numerator is only a 3. And in denominator, n plus 1 remains. And n approaches infinity. 3 over n plus 1 as n approaches infinity goes to 0. Numerator is a constant. Denominator gets larger and larger. So this limit equals 0. 3 over infinity is 0. Because this limit is 0 and 0 is less than 1, based on the ratio test, the given series is convergence.